understands the uh, machinations of our economy is former finance minister Tlan Tlan Nene. Uh, he's welcomed the fact that South Africa has emerged from its first technical recession in eight years. He has warned, however, that much work uh, will need to be done to ensure that South Africa stays out of recession territory. Our reporter, Nompu Siziba, caught up with him earlier at the Leader Ex Expo in Santon. She asked Nene about his thoughts on entrepreneurship, his take on the country's growth story, and even about uh, the political landscape. We're here at LeaderX at the Santin Convention Center, uh, which is all about entrepreneurship and promoting it, uh, where ordinary folk are meeting uh, business leaders who've made it in life and entrepreneurs who've also uh, conquered the field. Um, they're imparting their wisdom as to what they can do going forward to improve their businesses uh, and their entrepreneurship. So I'm joined by Nklan Tlanene, the former finance minister, uh, to give us some insights on uh, his, uh, his visit here. Thanks very much for joining us, sir. So, tell us why you felt it was important to come to this particular gathering today. Well, uh, firstly because of my role as Interim Director at Vets Business School. As you know, it's organized by the South African Business Schools um, uh, Association. Uh, but I had also been um, given instructions to come and um, uh, facilitate the conversation with uh, Dr. Koza, one of the you know illustrious um, uh, sons of uh, South Africa, who's uh, made a you know remarkable, who's made a mark in uh, South Africa's history, both in the, in the, in the business and the academic uh, space. What do you think that South Africa needs to do? Because not everyone can become an entrepreneur. Um, if we look at uh, many young people who've left school before they're supposed to leave because of social issues and so on and so forth, how do we address that particular gap? I think um, from the learnings of Dr. Koza here, who actually was um, telling his life story, it is very clear that um, indeed, as you're correct to say, that it's not everyone that can be an entrepreneur, but it's, uh, we are all gifted in, in various ways. We can convert what we have, we can, all we need is an environment that is conducive uh, to, to allow us space to be able to do that. You, we talk so often about um, unemployment in the country, and when we, then we focus on job creation, but we actually do not make it a, a topical issue that people should actually be looking at opportunities around them which they can turn into business opportunities and uh, be entrepreneurs um, in themselves in various uh, fields where people are passionate about because it should go with your passion also it's that's why some people actually became entrepreneurs by accident they didn't know that they were entrepreneurs but there's something that they loved and they started doing it you you know the likes of the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerbergs, all of those actually did something they were passionate about and turned it into a business. Now, I know, I've always known you to be an optimist. We've, come, we've heard that the uh, GDP for the second quarter came in positive territory, up 2.5%, which means we're technically out of recession. But are you optimistic about the growth trajectory of the country going forward? I'm sorry to repeat Dr. Koza's words. I'm not an optimist. I'm a realist. You know, optim an optimist is somebody who sees a half a glass as half full, as opposed to an, you know, a pessimist who sees the glass as half empty. I see a glass as needing a top-up. We need to pick up, now that the economy has turned the corner, growing at 2.5% from a lower base, remember, and uh, which means the performance is not as good as it's supposed to be. So we just need to roll up our sleeves and make sure that we do not drift back into, into the negative again. The sectors that have actually carried us, um, according to the numbers, have actually been agriculture, forestry and fisheries. Now you can imagine those are the sectors that have not actually been given you know, the boost that they require. So there are sectors where we actually can be able to put in our all and I think we should just begin to focus on those sectors, uh, taking, of course, these sectors that have rescued us up, uh, on board. And then lastly, Mr. Nene, I mean, you are a political animal, you have grown in the struggle and so on and so forth, and we are heading towards December, crunch time, and things are getting hot politically. Give, just give us your thoughts about what you anticipate going forward politically. Now, the only difference is that, you know, the world becomes different when you are sitting in the stands, you know, than being in the pitch. So now being in the stands, all I can say is that in the run-up to December, it's going to get 
quite ugly as we have seen, but uh, post-December, that's where I'm looking, post-December there will be certainty because we will know what uh, we are up against and what leadership we will have elected. And I hope uh, South Africans are actually going to be, not to be passive players in this, that we are all going to be actively involved in making sure that we build our country. All right, and we'll speak to Owen and Como about those uh, GDP figures as well uh, that Nene and our uh, current finance minister were commenting on. But let's take a quick look at some data today.